Okay, in this um, video we're going to talk about modifying uh, mesh data. So this is actually modeling 101, uh, doing some basic modeling. Um, there's not much to really understand about modeling. It's just moving things around uh, vertices. Um, so let's look at a very this very basic shape of this uh, um, square. And if I move into it, it's got four vertices that define one polygon. Actually, it defines two polygons. Um, they're triangles. All polygons uh, in uh, 3D are separate, are what are called tessellated. That means turned to triangles. And they're tessellated down to triangles, even though you're seeing one square. In newer versions of Blender, they call them ingons. Ingons are multiple vertice polygons, but they're always tessellated. They're always reduced to triangles. And the properties of a triangle is that it's only defined by three vertices. And because the orientation of the vertices, um, uh, vertices can't be twisted, the, the edges can't be twisted, the polygon itself can't be twisted. Um, so um, let's just look at one. We'll, we'll reduce this down to one triangle. I select some vertices, then I hit F for face, or I have to select all of them. Hit F for face. We got one triangle. The If I move a triangle around, you can't can't really twist a triangle. You can rotate it with respect to another point, but you can't twist it. And so it's got a very defined, it's got two surfaces defined on this end. It's got a surface on the back end. It's got another surface. In Blender, in the older versions of Blender, triangles have two, um, They even though they have one normal, it it will display double-sided. Um, it'll display two sides, and I think you can force it to only display one side. So if I go to this view, um, it says double-sided. If I click that, It'll make them single-sided, and if I hit Z, and I got that side's view, and then, well, this side's dark, and that one's light. And if I hit double-sided, then both get lit. Let me see. But if I turn double-sided off, this gets lit, and that remains dark. Now, in most programs, whenever you're dealing with single-sided polygons, um, it will make the other side invisible. It won't even draw it. It'll only draw from the from the face that is the dominant face side. If you draw the normals, you can see in edit views uh, under wireframe, you can see the normal. And it's showing that the normal is pointing out from the surface on this side and it's not on this side. And that's how you know which direction the normals are facing. The normal is a what's called a vector. And a vector is just two points. Um, it's actually just one point with a direction. And so it's got a defined direction. If we increase the not size of the normal and we go in editing, edit in it and wireframe, we increase the size of the normal. It just increases the magnitude of that um, draw normals. It just increases the magnitude of that vector. Okay, but the normal starts out at the center of the polygon. If I move these vertices around, the normal will adjust to orient itself to that polygon. And what a normal does is it not only defines the front face of the polygon, it defines um, the part that gets lit. 
and it does what's called a dot product of it and the light. If I put a light up here, add a lamp, it does what's called a dot product, which is a mathematical function of the vector of the light, which actually is pointing out in all directions. So it's got a bunch of normals. The light's got a normal um, that it, uh, it's, it doesn't really have a normal, but it's got, um, it lights everything within uh, the parameter of itself. And the surface will get lit if it is oriented towards the light. It will, the, the more it points toward the light, the more well lit it gets. So if I select this and I move over here and I orient this polygon, well, it's supposed to get lit. If I select that and I move that, let me move over here, it should get more well lit, but it you will probably won't see it unless you go to camera views and render it. So this is okay, let me change the display view. I have to do that in material in the, the render buttons disk view and they have F12 F uh, I got I changed layers. Okay there's it's and if I orient it more towards the camera it will be more well lit because what it's doing is it's taking the light and it's reflecting the light on its surface towards the camera and this will yield darker and the more it points away from the light the darker the surface or that's really so what it's supposed to do um, this should be not very well lit you can see it's darker and if it's this way it's going to be lighter and that's because the normal to the surface and um, this matters in that if I have, if I take the these vertices and I extrude them, and uh, if I hit Z or no, if I hit F12, F, come on, F12. This is darker because it's really supposed to. It's being lit because um, everything oriented to the camera view gets lit. Or, uh, the orientation of the of the view, it automatically lights the surface in, in shaded mode, but whenever you render it, it comes out dark. Let me see, F12. Uh, oh, it's the camera view that it's rendering. So we have to go to the camera, camera, grab it, move it up, move it up, and then reorient it to the surface. And then we will be able to see both polygons. So there, the one that's oriented to the light is getting well lit. The one that's oriented against, away from the light is not very well lit. If we go into wireframe mode, we see the normals are pointing. One's pointing to the light, one's pointing away from the light. And the these um, there's a, a operation called a fong shade that um, normally when these two normals don't share the edge um, in fong shading it will treat them as um, flat surfaces. But whenever you smooth this, what's called a, um, a set smooth operation, and it hits set smooth, and you look at this in shaded view, you can see it's trying to gradient that. This, oper this, um, this, this shading method 
It's called grow shading, and all it does is it lights the surface, this surface, according to, in this this case, oriented towards which way you're looking at it, but that isn't the real way it shades it. If I do a control shift, I think our, it's down here, the texture shade, it it will show me um, the actual, what is, how it's actually gonna render but it, for some reason it's not actually showing me the grow shading. Here's showing me the grow shading. And grow shading is just a really fast way of making things look good and smooth. But what it's really doing is it's computing the lighting of the vertex normals. And the vertex normals are determined by, um, by computing the normals with respect to what's um, to the the surfaces that the vertex owns, and this you can't really see vertex normals in Blender, um, but um, you to know what it's really doing, um, we're going edit and mode. And what's really happening is, is that this vertex right here um, in smooth is actually being oriented to this normal. This vertex here is defined as the vector addition of these two normals. And um, it probably might be pointed away from the common median of these two so it would be pointing off in this direction this vertex normal would be pointing off in that direction and so if this was grow shaded let's see if that's really true no it looks like they're being oriented to the vector addition of these two vectors. So this is getting the same normal information as that guy's getting, but it's the vector addition of these two. So it is, it's the edge normal that these guys are getting. And these guys down here should be getting the vector normal from the polygon. So if I go over here, they are they are getting lighting from the polygon surface and surface normal and these guys are getting the vector addition which is the in-between normal point so um, if we go to edit in wireframe mode um, then this normal and that normal will define on an edge normal will be pointing off in this direction. And if there's a light over here, these will be brighter than the, the other two polygons. And we can prove that by taking and selecting this, editing these points, um, moving the cursor, oh, whoops, moving the cursor to the selected then adding a lamp and changing our view so that we're working within the plane of the two vertices. And we move this lamp right here a little bit close. And that will cause these two to be brighter than those sides. And that's exactly what's happening. And so, and that's the grow shading acts, uh, what it does is it just computes the lighting with respect to the normals of the vertices. And if you put this lamp over here, let me see, I put that lamp over here, it looks like it's having no effect on oh I, I have to do this I have to go that this is not going to have any effect for some reason um but i'll see the 
effect. And turn on grow shading. If I set that there, let's see, it's not having an effect. If I put this one over here, down there, that's not having an effect. There. And it's, it will get brighter the further you move the light away. Um, yeah, that's usually how it works. But if I hit render, you'll, saw it, you'll see it renders there. If I move this light down here, it's going to render more on one side instead of the center. And it will be according to the surface normal. Whoops. Move. It. And if I move it up over here, that. This is going to be darker, and but that's going to the edge is going to be brighter. And if I move it over here, that that corner is going to be brighter. And what it's doing in, is when it renders, it's not using grow shading; it's using something called fong shading. And what fong shading does is it takes the normal and it inter interpolates it. That means it. It finds all the in-betweens normals along the surface. It, for every pixel on the surface, it is computing the normal with respect to that point using the polygon normals. And so it will create a smooth, really rounded, uh, rounded um, shading of effect. And it'll make it look smooth even though it's not. And you can prove to yourself that it really isn't smooth, that it's just shading things, what's called shading, to make it look smooth. If you take and you move something, you move the cursor and then you put a sphere in the center of that, put a mesh sphere, uh, something like this, a UV sphere, and scale it down. And if you look at far away and you, you render it, you will see that as you scale up the, the sphere is actually, if you look to the side, it's, it'll be more, become more apparent. If I do if I move a camera over here where I can see a definite corner and I zoom the camera in to the surface, you will see that there is a defined corner. Even though the surface is appearing smooth, there's a defined corner, so it really isn't smooth. It's just being shaded to look smooth. And I can do the same smoothing to this by doing set smooth and then hit shade and then it tries to do that smoothing on the object. The reason why it's giving this pixelized view of things that has to do with the, um, the OSA, that's the number of samples that it uses and the resolution. If I up the resolution and render it should get rid of that um, sort of mesh effect that we were seeing a second ago and things become more smooth because there's more pixels to render. And what it's doing is that given this higher resolution it is um, downsampling the the render to the surface and so if you want more definition you would use a bigger render frame and you would get more smooth effect 
on your surface. Now if you want actual smooth surface you use what's called a subdivision surface and what a subsurface does is it actually interpolates the surface um, using an algorithm called a Catmull Clark um, surface and Catmull and Clark were two guys that work at Pixar and Pixar were the guys that came up with the surface um, and this is what permits them to create realistic looking characters and now if I if I go and put my sphere in here put my UZ v sphere and put it down there actually it's inside the surface so let's separate it hit P separate from the surface and it doesn't have subsurface on it and if I render this you will get a defined or you should get a defined uh, I think it's I have to turn oh I have to turn the subdivision on the render which is what this is and then we should see a rounded surface we don't see a defined corner and here hit set smooth on that and we get a nice smooth surface the only problem with subsurfaces is that you can't accurately define a, a rigid geometry unless you're to, to increase the subdivision and then you're able to get kind of rounded corners but still it's not as rigid as the original geometry and you can you can get more rigid dot geometry by adjusting the subdivision I think if uh, we adjust that this might crash it but yeah it's giving much more defined um, more defined subsurface or if I hit subsurface and edit wow it's got tons of polygons let's um okay and uh oh, wow let's turn the subsurface off or reduce this subdivision to three and that one to three and so this is the render we can adjust the subdivision to a low level for editing of the surface and we had turned subsurface on and we can see the subsurface with respect to those if I take this polygon and I extrude it which is E and extrude it out it creates a a little finger and that finger is not smooth and I have to say spent smooth on that so that the finger does get rendered um, and I can make it more like an actual finger by extruding the surface even more I have to select that extrude select all the things hit set smooth and then it gets defined as a real finger and you could create hands this way you could create uh, mouths and uh, you you can imagine that probably bringing this in side the surface and scaling it scaling it down and then whoops, scaling it down then grabbing and moving on the inside of the surface we create a little pit and then if I take that and move it up a little bit and then extrude it again and take that and move it up a little bit Great grab it we can create mouths this way right. and this is actually how at Pixar they 
work with their objects. Oops, uh, I didn't mean to extrude that. I delete that. And uh, I'll select these and hit subdivision. That's W, subdivision. And it creates a more complex shape. And I will be able to, let's take all the other geometry, the stuff that is confusing the view. And we'll deselect this geometry and do what's a brush deselect of that geometry and get the stuff that's behind that we don't want. These vertices. And then we hit hide. And now we're just looking at this, these sets of surfaces. And we can create lips by increasing the scale of that, bringing it out and up. And then we can adjust the, these vertices. Let's turn off the normals because they're confusing the view. So turn off normals. And you see the, these things can create more of the lips. And I bring them up. Oops, I don't want that stuff up back there bring them up. Actually, these vertices are what we want. Bring them up. Move them over. Scale them up a little bit. Move them up this direction. Move them over. Check the shaded view. See what we're looking at. Um, scaling them down and scaling them out, move them over, using something called a smooth function, which tries to orient them more towards the surfaces. And then we have to select all the vertices, do a set smooth to make it look smoother. Move it over again, you know, you can just, you can see how this is just keeps getting more involved. I might have to scale these guys down and it makes it harder because I'm doing this at a really strange angle that I'm working. The, the best thing to do is to not work from a specific angle. I mean, from a, a odd angle but work from a from a, a axis, one of the axes, from the perspective on the axes that would work better. But you can see how that looks a little bit like a mouth. It's actually got some problems with it. This is going out too far. These need to be moved over. This one needs to be moved there. Oh, that's not the one we need to modify. It's this one here. You have to, to, to keep from modeling. For, you don't want to model from a specific view. You want to keep adjusting your view as you're modeling because um, it's hard to tell where in space you're doing your modeling. So you want to keep adjusting your view as you're modeling. And if you had a VR headset and you could work in VR, it'd be a lot easier to figure out where it is with respect to, um, to everything. But that, in a, that becomes more detailed as I increase my subsurface, my draw subsurface. And you can see that it looks more kind of like a Qbert lip. Uh, if you've ever seen Qbert, he's got lips like this and then we can hit render and we can see what it looks like and so you can see how you could create a whole character this way 
you could um, edit the surface. You would have to subdivide these, subdivide these, subdivide these, and subdivide these. What would be more accurate is to is to do what's called a loop cut, and um, that would create a better definition. And if we scale this up and move it up like that, like so, then and if these also these also have to be subdivided. And what I really need is a loop cut is what I need to work with. Otherwise I get these these divine creases here. And that's because this all goes to one vertice. And the way to fix that is to erase these edges. So I erase the edge here and I erase the edge here. And then I get rid of this edge here. Or actually, it doesn't matter. I define a face here, and then I define a face here, and it looks a little smoother there. If I want to get rid of this crease, I have to do the same thing here. I get rid of that edge, I get rid of this edge, and then I define polygons. Actually, I want to get rid of this edge here. And then I want to define a polygon with respect to these vertices. One face there, one face here, and I've gotten rid of that crease. And I got something that's a little more like a mouth. If I wanted to make the mouth more detailed, um, but you understand, the more detailed you get, um, if I, whoops, oh, well, did I delete that? Yeah, I did. Darn it. That's no good. Oh, no, I went to a different uh, layer. That's what happened. <laughs> Scared me. And I got more. I want to subdivide this more. But I want to decrease my subdivision because I've got more detail on the surface. That will affect my subdivision of the surface. Now I got more detail, and with more detail, you have to modify more vertices. And the, the, uh, it, to to limit to uh, to be able to more accurately model, you have to use what are called loop cuts. And let me see if I can do a loop cut in this old version of Blender. Um, I'll do a loop cut right here with respect to these. And let me see. I think it's... Let me go to the... I think there's a... If I hit space... Uh, mesh. There was no loop cut. And there, I think there might have been a knife. If we hit K. No, there's no, no knife. No, there was nothing of that sort. But uh, in more recent versions of Blender, there is what are called loop cuts, which will and uh, will select. Uh, what they'll do is they'll select a loop of uh, um, of vertices, and then whenever you do a subdivide, it'll do uh, a cut. Actually, the loop cut 
you have to select a set of the vertices and then what it does is it selects an edge between the polygons of inside the um, inside the polygon it selects a loop and then it will let you cut the surface what it's really doing is it's subdividing the surface but with respect to the two loops that you select and so you would select one loop of vertices and how it determines the loop is by by a little bit of the construction history of the polygons and so you would select a vertex here and then you would say loop select and it would either select uh, this loop or it would select that loop there and uh, then you could select one loop select another loop and then do a loop uh, sp uh, loop split and then it would create another loop in here and it would increase the resolution with respect to these two loops rather than respecting than increasing the um, subdivision with respect to this you know it wouldn't, it wouldn't increase these edges it would increase those edges it would put an edge between the two loops and this video has gone on long enough I need to do another video but I've talked about subdivision surfaces and I've talked about some basic modeling I may have not talked about extruding but all you do with extrude is you select the the, the vertices um, you go in and hit tab and you select two uh, a number of vertices and then you hit E to extrude and it does that if you turn the subsurface off you can actually see that it's just extruding these vertices but when you turn subsurface on it's actually interpolating the surface um, the surface detail and subdivision surface was supported long before any of the advanced modeling tools of Blender were supported. But on the old versions you can still do the subsurface uh, modeling. And so you could define an entire character within 2.04 and then bring it into a new version of Blender. Um, they say this is a bad interface but I, it's actually pretty good. It's, it's just that it's terse. It doesn't really show you much detail it gives more detail with uh, with the tooltips but this was what I had to work with whenever I started using Blender I had very little information but as you get to know all the various pieces like this is decimator this actually reduces polygons on the surface and it it you it uses normal information to determine how to decimate how to reduce the polygon um, data the decimator it looks like the decimator in this case doesn't affect the actual data unless you hit apply I think you have to hit it in this uh, let me reduce this and then I hit apply and there it actually applies the decimation and that's how you would reduce your polygonal data uh, on your object still retain some of the original the original um, detail of the object while at the same time reducing the polygon count and that would be you would use that if you were to um, work with um, say game blender and you were trying to render your frames faster you might take your entire scene and decimate it and reduce the polygon and you can see from this view the decimator reduces everything it actually tessellates everything reduces everything to triangles and the more desolation decimation you do the more pronounced the effect and 
it reduces it pretty much to the rigid bot the rigid geometry the more decimation you do the less detailed the object gets and then it starts welding points and just getting really awful looking so you want to be very selective of you want to be very careful with decimation but that's how you would um, reduce polygon counts and uh, so now let me do a different video because this one's getting too long.